So I've been coaching and mentoring software engineers in the tech space for some time now. These are software engineers who have jobs, but are trying to land more challenging and higher paying roles. Throughout this experience, I've noticed some reoccurring patterns among software engineers struggling to secure these opportunities. A lot of people think I'm not getting hired because the job market is hard, and that's not always the case. The market is hard, but companies are still hiring. Recruiters are now headhunting, reaching out to specific people, and it's easier to land a job now if you have the experience and showcase it properly. Here are the three most common patterns I'm seeing in software engineers who are struggling to land higher paying and more challenging roles. The first pattern I'm seeing is that a lot of engineers don't actually have the skills required for a higher paying and a more challenging role. I know this is counterintuitive. How can I have the skill if I haven't had the experience? I'll explain in a little bit. The second pattern I've noticed is that even if you have the skills or the experience, you do not show it properly in the way you present yourself in your resume or your LinkedIn profile. Last but not least, let's assume you've showcased your skills on your resume and in your LinkedIn profile, attracting attention from recruiters and landing informational calls or interviews. If you consistently get those informational calls, but they don't lead to interviews or you're getting those interviews, but you're not receiving any offers. It simply means you don't know how to interview. You don't know how to convince people that you're capable of doing the job and that you're the right fit for the role. You don't know how to talk about yourself or your experiences in a way that shows value to them. Let's dissect these one by one. The first pattern is that a lot of engineers don't actually have the skills required for a higher paying, more challenging role. A lot of companies are now being specific about the type of experience that they're looking for. Earlier this year, when I was looking for a new role within my company, I had a lot of informational sessions with managers and a good amount of them straight up told me to my face that they were not going to interview me because my background didn't match what they were looking for. I was working on networking automation, but looking for more challenging roles in backend development. Was I sad by their response? Absolutely, but I understood why. Even the best engineers still need time to onboard and ramp up. This onboarding time will be greater for someone who's jumping into a new space. In some cases, it may take you four to six months before you can contribute anything substantial substantial and that timeline is unacceptable in certain organizations. Those informational sessions with managers are what helped me understand the point I'm trying to make. The work I was doing compared to the work other teams were doing was a night and day difference in terms of complexity. One team was working on multi-collaboration on documents over the web, enabling multiple people to work on the same document in real time. Another team was working on a new media protocol for serializing and deserializing data for video and voice calls over the internet. Those were all different problem spaces that I did not have experience in. The way software was built on those teams is completely different. Could I have succeeded on those teams? Absolutely yes. I personally love a challenge, but the reality is those managers were not willing to roll the dice on me. They would be better off with someone who had a similar background to the work they were doing. I eventually landed a role in one of those teams, but I didn't do it by using my past experience. I did it by showing my passion and my love for software, talking about the interesting projects that I work on outside work and talking about the impact of my work. Not the day-to-day -day things I did, but the impact that resulted from them. One of the easiest ways to enhance your skills outside work is by working on projects. However, many of us struggle to find time, exciting projects, or projects that are challenging enough to promote real learning at a level that is complicated enough. A tool I recommend for this is using a platform like Codecrafters. Codecrafters is not sponsoring this video, but they are really, really good. Codecrafters is a platform specifically designed to help software engineers become really good at their craft. You learn by working on advanced programming challenges where you build some of the most popular dev tools from scratch. These are tools like Redis, Docker, Git, and more. Each challenge is broken into multiple steps, with each step having information to learn about the tool you'll be building, which gives context about the coding task that comes next. You get to pick the coding language to use to complete the task, and a repository with boilerplate code is created for you as a starting point. It's a great way to learn and master a programming language and improve your coding skills by building some of the most complex real-world systems and dev tools. It's also a fantastic way to learn how some of the most popular dev tools are designed. This can come in handy during technical interviews, especially system design interviews. Codecrafters is used by senior software engineers, data scientists, SRE engineers at several companies, and they continue to create more and more challenges. This video is not sponsored, but I do get a little kickback if you sign up using the link in my bio. 
Code Crafters is a great way to expose yourself to writing code that builds software outside what you do at work at a level that is complicated enough where you actually learn something new. Now let's move on to the second pattern I see with software engineers who are struggling to land higher paying jobs. Assuming you have the skills and the experience, right? You've worked at X company for Y amount of years and worked with some complicated systems and made huge business impact. If you're still finding it hard to land a higher paying software engineering role, it's simply because you're not presenting yourself properly. Landing a higher paying job is as much branding as it is having the technical knowledge. I would even argue that it's more branding than having the actual technical knowledge. Let's start with the basic document, the resume. Resumes are subjective, but I see many people make mistakes on them. These mistakes range from formatting, putting too much information on the resume that's not relevant, or not capturing the key details from your experiences on your resume. Here's an example of a really good resume I got from Jordan Cutler on LinkedIn. We don't have time to dissect the whole resume, but here are some things that he does that are really, really good. First, resume formatting. I will always recommend you use the simple resume template. It's simple and easy to follow. The recruiter knows where everything is and they don't have to go looking for anything. Next, let's move on to the content of the resume. You will notice a lot of impact statements. He's not talking about the work he did, he's highlighting the impact of that work. This is huge because it shows what you've been able to accomplish, which is a primary indicator of your capabilities. It shows the outcome of your work. You can work for a company for a long time, but if your work doesn't lead to any outcomes, then it's not impactful. You'll also notice everything on the resume is placed properly. He's not trying to force too much information in there. Two to three high impact bullet points on previous roles and four bullet points on his current role. The final thing I want to note here is where he lists his skills. Each skill is listed along with the experience and not in a separate section. This way, whoever is reading the resume attaches a skill to an experience, giving them context on how you've used and learned those skills. This is what a proper resume should look like. Let's jump to the second side of presenting yourself properly, LinkedIn. Your LinkedIn profile is a social view of your professional career. People may not say it, but you're being judged on how you present yourself. Your profile picture, your bio, the content you interact with, and much, much more. There's a lot to go through on LinkedIn, but I'll summarize some of the mistakes that I see people making. Don't put programming languages on your LinkedIn headline. Your headline should have what you specialize in. Software engineer back-end, software engineer front-end, DevOps engineer, and more. Including the programming languages in your LinkedIn headline make it seem like those are the only languages you know or the only languages that you're open to working with, and that's usually not the case. The highest paying software engineering roles pay you to solve problems with code. You should be adaptable and able to learn new languages. The next mistake I see a lot of people making is that they don't put description on their experiences on LinkedIn. Without the description, no one knows what team you worked on or what you did on that team. It's also not your resume, so you can add as much detail and description as possible that makes you more marketable. You can also add links as well. You should also be interacting with specific types of content on LinkedIn. It will brand you as someone who is an expert in your field, who is looking to learn, and knows what they're doing. The final pattern I see with software engineers who are struggling to land higher paying jobs is that they don't know how to interview. Let's assume you've shown your skills properly on your LinkedIn and on your resume, and you're getting recruiters to reach out to you, but you're not getting those interviews or are failing final round interviews. It's because you don't know how to articulate yourself and speak from a place of impact. You're not selling yourself effectively. The thing is, I know you're really good at what you do, but if you're not communicating that clearly and confidently during interviews, then it won't matter. Your answers are all over the place. You ramble, saying a lot but not communicating anything. You get lost in your responses and by the end, you haven't actually answered the question that they asked. Your confidence is an issue. When you doubt yourself, especially in technical interviews, it shows and that lack of confidence becomes a red flag for interviewers. You don't know how to talk about your experiences. You focus too much on your task and not the result. You don't use the right words to describe certain things. You're either too technical or not technical enough. You keep talking about the work you've done, but you're not explaining the value it brought to the team or the company. On the technical side, you haven't practiced or prepared enough. Yes, lead code and systems design aren't the best way to test your knowledge, but they're the standard way and you will have to learn them to pass the technical interviews. The reality is, interviewing is a skill, just like coding or any other technical discipline. And like any skill, you can get better at it with practice and guidance. One tool I recommend to get better at technical interviewing is Exponent. They cater to different tech fields and have videos to help you learn and answer certain technical interview questions in those fields. Again, this video is not sponsored. 
but I do get a commission if you sign up using my link. Now, those are the three patterns I've seen with software engineers who are struggling to land higher paying and more challenging roles. Not having the skills required, not marketing themselves and their skills properly, or not being good at interviewing. If you're a software engineer and you want to get better at everything I've mentioned in this video, you want to land a higher paying, more challenging role, but you don't know where to start and you need guidance, I'm inviting you to apply to my coaching program designed for software engineers. It's called the ProDev Coaching Program. The ProDev Coaching Program is a one-on-one -on -one coaching program for software engineers where I work with you personally to help you achieve your goal. I'll work with you one-on-one -on -one to turn your weaknesses into strength and help you land the roles that you're aiming for. Here's what we'll do. First, we'll identify your skills gap, the difference between what you know and what you don't know, and create tailored learning plans to help you bridge this gap. I'll also teach you how to talk about your experiences in a way that shows the value of the work you've done. Next, we'll focus on building your network and your online presence. Simply applying for jobs is not enough anymore. We'll work on branding you effectively with people who can open doors for you. We'll also tackle mastering interviews, practicing behavioral and technical questions so you can confidently showcase your skills and your experience. Here's the thing though, I'm only working with three people at a time. This isn't a one size fits all. I'll work with you closely over a period of time to make real meaningful changes. So if you're ready to take control and transform your career, don't wait. Head over to prodev.umacodes.com to apply today. That's it for this video. For those of you who are new here, my name is Uma. I am a software engineer and a content creator. I enjoy learning and breaking down complex technical topics to make them easy for you to understand. I also coach software engineers to help them learn and increase their earning potential. As I said, if you'd like to work with me, click the link in my bio to apply to my coaching program. I also have some courses on my website that you can check out. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos like this. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time. Peace.